Holy God, we give you thanks this day that you have brought us to this place so that we might worship you. And so as we are here this morning, O oh God, we pray that your spirit might move among us. God, help these words I'm about to speak be not just my words. In fact, Lord, take away from, from these words anything that I would add, but make them be yours alone. Lord, open our ears, open our hearts, so that we might be ready to receive what you have prepared for us on this day. Amen. One of the things I enjoy most every week is right here, right now, this moment, when I get to stand here and talk to you. When I, having heard the word read among us, I get to say some things to you, uh, hopefully sent and lifted up and inspired some degree by the Holy Spirit and not just my own kind of crazy ideas. But one of the things that, that I occasionally get comments from, some of you have done this and some of other churches have said this, they, I get comments about you know, how I preach without notes, right? I just stand here and I talk to you and occasionally people will talk to, will, will remark on that. And when I remember, I always say, well, here's the problem. Here's the thing though, you don't know what I meant to say, but I forgot to say. <laughs> so when you're impressed that I remember everything, you don't know. But here's the thing, I know every Sunday after, after church, not every Sunday, but some Sundays after church, I know, oh, I forgot to make that point. Oh, oh, I meant to go this way and I didn't. I get caught up in this search for the perfect sermon, right? I, I get caught up with this desire to do it perfectly. And this is something we can do a lot in church. We do this all the time in church. People who lead church, people who lead worship, we get caught up in this idea that we've got to make it just perfect so that people will really hear God, will really see God, will really connect to God if we just do it right. You know, and last Sunday, what a wonderful service we had on Easter. But like Easter is the king of all, we got to really hit this one out of the park Sunday mornings in the church, right? Because we know, you know, we had 122 people here in the sanctuary. That's about 50 more than we average during the year, you know. And if we do it just right, if we, if we get the songs perfect, if I, if I preach a really good message, you know, maybe some of those 50 people will show up, you know, three times a year instead of twice a year, right? If we just do it exactly right. We get obsessed with this idea of being perfect because then we can honor God if we are perfect. And I think it happens too, not just for leaders of worship and, and preachers. I think maybe some of you have that issue as well sometimes. You know, when I talk to lay people, when I talk to members of the church about uh, talking to people about Jesus, what, what I often hear them say is something along the lines of, well, you know, I'm worried I'm going to say the wrong thing. I think sometimes they don't say this, but they're thinking, well, I know I've looked at my own life, and I don't really think that I'm the best ambassador for Jesus. You know, I'm trying in my faith, but I know I'm struggling, and so I don't feel confident about going out and telling people about Jesus. I might mess it up. I might not get it perfect. My imperfections might keep people from hearing and receiving, receiving the grace of God. I have all these thoughts in my mind this morning as, I, as I'm preaching with you, uh, to you, and, and I thought of this scripture, which maybe, when I first read it this week, and I was thinking about this sermon, maybe it doesn't fit so well, you know, I mean, because here it is, I'm talking to you about, well, how can you talk to people about Jesus? And here's the story, right? Well, someone didn't believe in Jesus, so they said, come back next week, and there Jesus showed up. And you might say, well... That'd be really easy for me to talk to my friends and family and neighbors about Jesus if they came over to my house and he showed up in the living room, right? I wouldn't have any problem getting more people into church if I could do that. How is this story helpful? Well, read again, because this is one of those things. You know, this is a traditional text that gets read in the church the Sunday after Easter, if you're in a church like ours that follows these sort of prescribed readings. And so I've been a pastor for about 15 years. I've probably preached this 15 times. I've, I've been a Christian for a little bit longer than that. I've probably heard 20 or more sermons on this exact same text. But I, this week, the Holy Spirit's so cool. This week, I saw this thing that I'd never really seen before. Read what Thomas says. They come to him and they say, we have seen the Lord. And yes, he says, I don't, I'm not going to believe it. But what is going to be the sign to him that he can believe? 
if I see the wounds on his hand and see the wound in his side, if I see and touch his wounds. Now, I've always had this idea, I really have, that this idea that our resurrection bodies, right, we believe that after you die, when Jesus come back, comes back, we're all going to be resurrected. And, P, and Paul talks about when we're resurrected, we will receive resurrection bodies. Right? And I don't know how you think about it, but I've always thought that would be a pretty good body, right? My glory, glorified body that I'm going to live in eternity with. Sometimes maybe it's easy for you to think about, you know, when you think about people you know who have died and gone to heaven, what do they look like, right? We sometimes ask. And in the history of the church, there was actually a theologian back in the Middle Ages who, who came up with this idea that when we are resurrected, when we're in heaven with God, that we will attain perfection, right? Our bodies will be perfect. And this, this fellow, I don't know how he came upon this, decided that 30 years old is when we are perfect in like physical, yeah, everyone's laughing. And, and so he said, everyone in heaven looks like they're 30, which would be really weird, I think. But but it's this idea, right, that when we are glorified, when we go to God, when we live and walk in eternity, we're going to be perfect, right? Our bodies won't be injured or broken anymore. And yet, what does this say? It was his wounds that let Thomas believe that he was really Jesus. It was his imperfections. It was the signs of his broken and imperfect body that revealed Christ to Thomas. Not a perfect Jesus, but a wounded Jesus. It is in the wounds that the grace of Christ is most visible to others. And I thought, wow, what a reassuring message. Because I'm not perfect. Everyone perfect, raise your hand. We're all going to ask you how you did it after church. I am not perfect. And if that is what's keeping me from being able to talk to people about Jesus, rest assured, it was the imperfect Jesus that revealed himself to Thomas. And so we don't have to be ashamed of our wounds and our imperfections. Now, I, I want to make a clear distinction here between sin and wounds, right? One of the things that Jesus didn't have to deal with that we do is that none of Jesus' wounds were self-inflicted. Right? He never sinned. We do all the time. And because we sin, we cause all kinds of hurt for ourselves. We damage our lives. We, we damage our relationships. We damage our bodies. We do all of these things. And so we should not celebrate our sin, but we should not be ashamed of our wounds either. Because our bodies are frail and fragile. Our minds are not perfect and we make mistakes and misunderstand. Our emotions are often things that are not under our control and so they can lead us places that we don't intend to go. We are wounded and broken people, but we don't have to be ashamed of that any more than Jesus should have been ashamed of his wounds. In fact, those very things about us can be the place where the grace of God is revealed. Our wounds can be the very place we show, show people what Jesus looks like. You know, I've seen this in my life before. I, I've seen it in my own life, and I've seen it in the lives of others. I've talked, I've preached with you before, I've talked to you before about my own divorce and how that day when I went to church after... Uh, deciding I needed to tell the congregation was a day I felt very vulnerable and wounded. I felt very imperfect that day. And yet through that experience, I was able to connect to people in my congregation who had never talked to me before because until my wounds were shown, they didn't think they could come talk to me about their own problems and their own relationships and their own marriage. Their, they couldn't see Jesus in me. They couldn't see me as a safe enough place to go and talk to until they saw that I, too, was wounded. I've seen it in the ministry of people who've suffered from alcohol and drug addiction and fought their fight through the grace of God to get clean and healthy and sober, and they are the ones who can speak the language of grace 
to those who are going through those same trials right now. Because they've been there and they've walked that path. In their wounds and brokenness, they can be a conduit of the grace of God to other people. I've seen people who are struggling as they age with their bodies not doing what they want to do anymore. Of them being limited in what they are able to do. That they, they used to be able to do so many things. Have the energy and physical ability to do things they can't do anymore. And yet, in the midst of that, have found a way to be a source of grace and encouragement to other people through prayer and through the other means that they still have in their hands to be able to say, here I am, wounded and broken, and yet still I am seeing God move among us, and I want to proclaim and lift that up. In the midst of our woundedness and brokenness, we find the place where we can show people Jesus our wounds themselves become signs of Christ. And so as we're gathered here this day, I wonder, how is God using your wounds? You know, we're all wounded. We're all sinners. And because we sin, we wound ourselves. And the question is not then, how do I become perfect enough that I can now at last proclaim the good news to other people? How, how can I be perfect enough that I now at last can finally walk the way God calls me to walk? But how can I, through my wounds, show the grace of Jesus Christ to other people around me? You know, here in the church, we get caught up on perfection sometimes. Two of our hymns this morning were about perfection, or at least they talked about it. And yet we aren't a perfect church, are we? I mean, I think we beautifully demonstrate that every Sunday in worship, that we are not a perfect church. And yet we are a place where the grace of God is revealed. And the world out there is also looking for perfection often in the church. The world out there often will say, well... They say these things about Jesus. They, they talk about how your life will be changed by Jesus. But I've seen those Christians. I've read the news stories. Why should I believe what they say? The world gets just as caught up about the requirement that the church be perfect as we do. And I wonder if we might be able to take from this story a lesson. We might be able to tell them. Tell the world, tell someone who raises that, you know, I've seen your church and there's a bunch of hypocrites in there. I've seen your church and I've seen, you know, selfish, lying people. I see people who are fighting with each other. I see people who don't know the peace and joy of God. How did you expect me to see that? And I, I wonder if we might say you're right. We're a church full of sinners. We're a church full of wounded and broken people. We're a church full of people who are hurt and damaged and imperfect. But here's how we know that Jesus is real. Even through us, the grace of God is at work. Even through us, people are finding faith in Jesus Christ. Even through us, imperfect, wounded, broken people that we are, the love of God is being shared, that we are holding and binding each other together in the midst of our own darkest and hardest days. We are finding strength in one another to face the trials that we're walking through. Yes, we are wounded, but God shows himself in that woundedness, and that is how I know that Jesus is alive. Because even in the midst of our mess, his grace still pours forth. And so I can't tell you Jesus is going to show up in your living room. I wish he would. It'd make our jobs much easier to try to convince the world that he is alive on this Easter, in this Easter season. But maybe we might use the story that we read in the gospel today. Maybe the Holy Spirit might guide us and lead us, convict us, and give us a way to show the world our wounds and how God is working through them, and how our faith lives even though we are wounded and broken people. Let us show the world, let us proclaim the news of Easter, that he lives. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, I do give you praise because imperfect people like us are your instruments of grace. And so, Lord, help us to walk not in shame or fear of our own imperfections and failings, but help us, O oh God, to open ourselves to be signs of grace to others. Lord, teach us how we might use our wounds to be people who can show what it looks like when God walks among us. And Lord, help us to proclaim the good news that Jesus is alive and that we are his evidence. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So this morning, as we sing our closing hymn, as our sending hymn, to go out in the world and try to live in a way and talk in a way that shows people that Jesus is alive, I'd invite you, as you are called by the Spirit this morning, you know, if you need a touch of grace, if you need this day a healing in your body or your spirit, if you need the faith that we sing, I'd invite you to come forward as we sing this morning. Receive an anointing that God promises to all who will ask for it. An anointing for healing, an anointing for grace, an anointing for spiritual encouragement. I'll just come forward and pray at the altar. God, use my wounds so that I might show people your grace. Let us do that together this morning as we sing. I'll invite you as you're able, as your bodies permit, please rise. And let us sing the good news of Easter, that he lives. Mm -hmm.